Herman Webster Mudgett, better known as H.H. H. Holmes, is a name that sends shivers down the spines of those who delve into the darkest annals of American criminal history. Born in Gilmanton, New Hampshire, in 1861, Holmes would go on to become one of the most infamous serial killers in American history. His story is a chilling tale of deception, murder, and a house of horrors that came to be known as the Murder Castle. Holmes was not born into a life of crime, he grew up in a relatively normal environment. However, as he matured, a dark and cunning side began to emerge. He was known for his intelligence and charm, which he used to manipulate those around him. Holmes attended the University of Michigan Medical School, where he began to explore his fascination with human anatomy. It was during this time that he started stealing corpses from the school's lab and practicing dissection on them. After completing his medical studies, Holmes moved to Chicago, where he took on a new identity. He changed his name to Dr. Henry Howard Holmes and started working at a drugstore. It was here that he began to formulate his twisted plans. He purchased an empty lot across the street from the drugstore and began construction on what would later become his infamous murder castle. The murder castle was a three-story building with secret passageways, soundproof rooms, and a basement equipped with a crematory, acid vats, and a dissecting table. Holmes designed it to be a labyrinth of death, where he could carry out his murderous fantasies without anyone suspecting a thing. He would often hire construction workers and then fire them to ensure that no one knew the full layout of the building. Holmes used a variety of methods to lure victims into his lair. He would offer them employment or lodging, promising a fresh start in the bustling city of Chicago. Many of his victims were young, single women who had come to the city seeking work. Once they entered his clutches, they were trapped. Holmes' method of murder was equally sinister. He would asphyxiate or poison his victims, often using gas in the specially designed rooms. Some victims were also subjected to horrific experiments and torture before their deaths. After their demise, their bodies were subjected to further atrocities, with some being dissected, stripped of their flesh, and sold as skeleton models to medical schools. One of Holmes' most infamous crimes was during the 1893 Chicago World's Fair, also known as the Columbian Exposition. He took advantage of the large number of tourists flooding the city, seeking new victims among the fair goers. Holmes would charm women he met at the fair, convincing them to come back to his murder castle. There, they would meet their gruesome fate. One of his victims during this time was a young woman named Minnie Williams, who had recently moved to Chicago. Holmes convinced her to transfer the deed to her property to him and then promptly murdered her. Her sister, Nanny Williams, would meet the same fate shortly thereafter. Holmes' web of deception was vast, and he used various aliases to continue his killing spree. However, Holmes' reign of terror would eventually come to an end. In 1893, he was arrested and charged with insurance fraud after an associate tipped off the police about his activities. While in custody, his dark secrets began to unravel. Detectives discovered the horrors within the murder castle, and it became clear that Holmes was responsible for multiple murders. As the investigation unfolded, the true extent of Holmes' crimes became apparent. He had killed countless people over the years, and the exact number remains unknown. Some estimates suggest that he may have been responsible for as many as 200 murders. Holmes was put on trial in 1895, and the nation was captivated by the sensational case. During the trial, Holmes displayed his manipulative charm by acting as his own attorney. He attempted to use his intelligence and charisma to convince the jury of his innocence, but the evidence against him was overwhelming. He was found guilty of murder and sentenced to death by hanging. On May 7, 1896, H.H. H. Holmes met his end on the gallows. As the trapdoor swung open beneath him, it marked the final chapter in the life of one of America's most notorious serial killers. But the horror of his crimes would live on in infamy. Holmes' story continues to captivate and horrify people to this day. His murder castle has long since been demolished, but the memory of the horrors that took place within its walls lingers.
it serves as a grim reminder of the depths of human depravity and the capacity for evil that can exist in even the most outwardly charming individuals. H. H. Holmes' legacy is a chilling one, a testament to the darkness that can lurk behind a facade of normalcy. His story serves as a cautionary tale, a reminder that evil can take many forms and that we must always be vigilant in the face of deception. While Holmes may have met his end on that gallows, the memory of his heinous crimes lives on, a grim reminder of the capacity for evil that can exist within the human soul. Now what do you think? Subscribe and follow for more.